Okay, in the previous part one, I was uh, looking at the phase diagrams for temperature as well as the specific volume, right? So that's not the only one that we have. So I want to look at other of them as well as I also want to look at the, this TV diagram in terms of expanding it to the uh, solids. I don't want to talk about that, okay? Uh, I will also plot the PT diagram and give some uh, information to you, okay? So please watch the part one uh, because this is not going to make a lot of sense before uh, watching uh, part one of this uh, phase diagram series, okay? Okay, I said that I'm going to have, uh, you know, let, let's plot this. Let's say P. Let's say this is the specific volume. I will have a, actually a dome still very similar, but not like that. There you go. Um, similar a dome. And again, this is called steam dome if I'm dealing with water or steam, right? Um, so let's go back over here. The, the constant pressures were like this, right? Zigzag, okay? And as I increase the pressure, I was going that direction, right? So now this will be kind of like inverse. I'm not sure it's uh, exactly inverse of it, but it's going to be like this. So I have this and it's not going to change like that too much. And this is going to be like this, okay? I have another one so it's going to be hitting this uh, dome here and then I will be going like this something like that okay so the, the, the regions are still the same so I have this compressed liquid over here this is the saturated liquid vapor region or mixture and this is still the superheated vapor okay and I want to give you information this PV diagrams are used more often than TV diagrams okay it is more convenient okay but you know one thing is in the previous uh, segment we said that when I increase the pressure I go up in the dome like look at the dome I go up like that right it is the same thing over here now I'm increasing what pressure no temperature obviously pressure is increasing but that, that the, the way that I'm looking at let's actually right here this is the you know constant temperature line so these are t is constant over here okay in that particular line that i'm following t is constant okay t is not changing so it really depends on what type of a process i have over here okay and this is basically isothermal process that i'm dealing with and let's say that the temperature over here is t1 for that particular uh, line that i obtain let's say this is t2 what will happen is I will have a similar relationship. As I go up over here, I will increase the temperature. So this T2 must be greater than T1, okay? I still have the critical point over here listed, right? So that's fine. But once I explain the TV diagram, this PV diagram is not that different, okay? So you can see just the, uh, the direction is different. Um, um, I'm not sure I uh, mentioned this. I don't recall at the point, moment, but I want to mention this. You can see the, the slopes over here. The slopes are... Uh, much uh, you know steep over here because the reason is when I compress a liquid from let's say 25 degrees to 100 degrees C the specific weight doesn't change as much as when it's changing over here so you can see this is you know a significantly more change same thing over here you can see it's much more steep over here it's much more um, you know um, this way just want to highlight that okay okay the next thing I want to do is actually expand this this graph that we plotted over here into Still, it's a PV diagram at the end of the day, but you can see what I did over here. I was just focusing on the vapor and liquid transition. So why don't I focus the entire phases, right? I completely ignored one of the phases, right? So if I go here, let's plot the same thing that I am pretending that this is the same thing, which is not too bad in my opinion. Um, so let's, let me, uh, you know, this is called a triple point or rather uh, line because you'll see it's also called triple point in a moment. I have something like this. I proceed with that. I have something like this. I have this. Um, okay. So, okay, before you freak out. So this part, we know. And we know everything about it. This is a superheated vapor. This is basically saturated liquid. I don't have space to write everything, so I'm writing saturated liquid plus saturated vapor mixture over here. So this region is the liquid. This is the solid plus liquid region. 
and this is the solid region so this is the exact same uh, you know entire phase is represented over here and you can see in here I can actually immediately without going through the liquid phase I can go to the solid to the uh, vapor phase okay so this is actually called solid plus vapor phase I'm aware that this looks a little bit more uh, not too welcoming okay the first thing is let's draw the same lines over there so let's say that one line is like this it's a constant I didn't, I didn't write it pressure I'm sorry about that so this is the constant temperature line so what will happen is whenever this goes up 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 up, up if it intersects and this kind of looks like a too high of a pressure but let me draw another one that is more reasonable of a pressure that we can convert so let's say that this this I have this hitting here so then it will be very similar to this over here so what will happen is the temperature is going to stay constant you know this from your physics and chemistry forces and then it's going to be now it's going to be extremely steep okay like this because uh, really uh, the specific volume of a solid changes very very little okay so that's why I'm extremely steep line over here so this is very traditional and interesting point to note here is this I can have like a pressure like that and you can see what happens so I may be right on the triple line like this and then it will go like that okay so what is so special about triple line and you may already uh, you know get the hint about this um, so I will have in this particular region I will have solid phase I will have a liquid case phase and I will have a gaseous phase as well present all three will be present over here this triple line or triple uh, point that I'll explain why it's called triple point in a moment okay um, but I'll come back to this um, so actually let's write this information for triple point for water for you to get a, some sense of for dealing with water which we do a lot okay not too bad so it's right at zero degree C right so apparently this this particular constant temperature is 0 0.01 degree C okay this type of transition so you're saying that okay but I don't see that that often you know like the lack of liquid from solid to gas phase right well here's the deal the pressure needs to be 0 0.6117 kilopascals now atmospheric pressure just to give you some, some insight over here atmospheric pressure was 101.325 pascals or 101.325 kilopascals same unit now kilopascals so the atmospheric pressure is 101 this is 0 0.6 so this is extremely low pressure okay just want to highlight so in regular day to day um, observations we don't really see this triple line that is the reason why we don't okay the, the pressure needs to be really really small okay I think that's all I have to say about the PV nothing comes to my mind except um, well I'll talk about that a little bit down the road but let's also look at the PT phase diagrams so let's have this thankfully it corrected because my lines are pretty bad today for some reason pressure temperature line and so what I will have is I will have some kind of like a Y okay so as we studied before for ideal gas and all so it's gonna be like this and I will have like a you know like Y like Okay. and let's write the, the phases this is the solid this is the liquid this is the gas over here and most of the times you will be dealing with liquid the gas right so for instance if I go up here this is all I deal with over here okay so this is showing the entire spectrum that is possible and what this point is you know let me talk about this point because I, I keep saying triple point mistakenly because it is also called triple point depends on the graph that you're plotting okay triple point and in the triple point look at this so I'm plotting what is the pressure over here what's the temperature over here so the temperature and pressure is constant here right so if I have a pressure and temperature graph so that entire whether I'm here or I'm here I'm here I'm here this will be the exact same point okay so now the triple line will appear as a triple point if I have the PT diagram that's why sometimes for, uh, I call see I even made the mistake without realizing I call this triple point so let's write this triple point or triple line okay so both are used interchangeably I just want to highlight that depends on the way that you're looking at it okay um, so let's look at the phase changes over here let's do it red 
or we used red before, so let's do uh, green. So this is the vaporization. So a liquid will form into into the gas is phase. So this phase change is going to be like here. So we got that part. Okay. So solid liquid, we also know this very well. It's called melting, right? And this one that uh, you know we didn't really discover. Actually, I didn't do it. So why don't I visit it now? I, it was uh, my oversight, but. It's kind of hard to draw, maybe that's why I kind of pretended to ignore it. But you can see like this here, right? So you can see extremely sharp, sharp like that. So you can see if I go in this particular, uh, you know, here, what will happen is pressure constant, right? Temperature is constant. So that's why it's hard to draw this, you know? Um, in this part, like this whole thing is this a point here, right? But anyways, so this is what is happening here, right? So that's directly going from solid to gas is called sublimation. So one thing that I want now want to say is this, this melting. So for most, if not, you know, like 99% of uh, pure substances, this melting happens like that. And this is much more uh, makes sense to you. So the substance typically contracts upon freezing. So if I'm freezing a pure substance, it's going to contract and this is what I have. That's fine. There's not, no question about it. But there are some very uh, unique substances and that is one extreme example or one uh, specific example is water. Okay. When, I, when water freeze, it expands. Okay. So let me plot this as well. So this is going to be the melting. So that melting line is for this line. Is for substances that expand upon freezing okay and again this is the weird one to be honest with you so okay so you can also change this particular graph so it will be tilted like this okay but I'm not gonna go there it, it becomes really complicated and we don't really use it um, but the point I'm making over here is this um, so this, uh, you know, substances that uh, expand on freezing, and I gave an example of water, right? So let me tell you something about it. It's kind of big deal. Um, I again, let's write this uh, water. Let me give you an example of a lake. I have a lake, right? And in the lake, let's say, you know, this is the bottom of the lake. The winter comes over. What happens is I have liquid water over here, right? So, you know, over here. So what happens is, Interestingly, when liquid goes to ice, it's called freezing, what happens is the, it expands. As it expands, the density of it goes lower or the specific weight goes higher, right? So what it means is if this is the surface level of the water, the ice is situated up here. So the ice is going to be right over here and liquid will be down there, okay? So this is immersed to most of the pure substances. And this is kind of very, uh, very interesting, at least to me, is that we have the sun, right? So this is brilliant, or this is very convenient in the sense that when the sun hits the ice, it just melts it, okay? So if ice was having this kind of a melting uh, graph, PT graph, what will happen is ice would sink down. And then, you know, the sun will never reach it, right, to, to melt it. So the life as we know it will be completely different, in my opinion, okay? So this is kind of coincidence, but is it? I don't know the answer, but I'm just making you think a little bit, okay? Um, I think that's all I have to say about these phase diagrams. I will look at the now um, property tables, extremely important things. So I'll be right back, okay? Thank you for watching this segment as well. Have a nice day.